This slide shows evidence of a broad complex tachycardia. A broad complex tachycardia should always be regarded as ventricular tachycardia until proven otherwise. Some of you will appreciate that this tachycardia has very negative complexes in V1 and V2, suggesting that it has a left bundle branch block morphology. Ventricular tachycardias with left bundle branch block morphology arise from the right ventricle. The identification of ventricular tachycardia with left bundle branch block morphology should therefore raise suspicion of disease in the right ventricle and should lead to investigation for conditions such as arrhythmogenic right ventricular cardiomyopathy or holes in the heart that are associated with a large left to right shunt and finally serious valvular problems affecting the right side of the heart. This ECG was taken from a cyclist who lost consciousness while cycling and sustained serious facial injuries. The ECG that we performed initially showed T-wave inversions in the inferior leads. The echocardiogram didn't show any major abnormality. We put him on an exercise stress test and he developed his fainting symptoms and the ECG unmasked ventricular tachycardia and subsequent investigation with an MRI showed the diagnosis of arrhythmogenic right ventricular cardiomyopathy. The presence of T-wave inversions beyond V1 in a post-pubertal Caucasian athlete or individual who plays sport should always raise the suspicion of the possibility of underlying arrhythmogenic right ventricular cardiomyopathy. The situation is somewhat difficult in younger pre-pubertal individuals because T-wave inversions are normal in these physically immature individuals. And individuals aged below 14 who exhibit T-wave inversions beyond V1 should have annual ECGs and if the T-wave inversions beyond V1 have not resolved by the age of 16, they should undergo investigation for arrhythmogenic right ventricular cardiomyopathy.